Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Emily and I'm an Olympus Pro Photographer. And if you are new here, um, make sure that you subscribe to my channel if you like um, my content and tell your friends, I would really appreciate it. Maybe your family, your neighbors, whoever you want. Uh, that would be awesome. And um, I'm planning more content for you guys. So if there is anything you really want to uh, hear from me, just make sure that you put it down in the comments. So for today's video, I'm going to teach you how to do this. It is called refraction photography. For those of you who don't know what refraction is, is when the light passes from one medium into another and it basically changes the direction of the light. So basically the flower that you're seeing right here, it's upside down. The direction has been inverted. So let's talk about gear. What do we need today? First of all, we need a camera, right? I mean, duh. So what I'm using is the OMD EM1 Mark III. I love this camera because it is so compact. I mean, look at it. It's about the size of my hand. Uh, I also love it because it has a flip screen and it is great for me because sometimes when I do macro, I might get into some angles that are uh, a little bit tricky to work with. And so the flip screen is very, very useful to see what I'm doing. So that's my uh, go-to camera for macro. I also have the EM1X. I'm shooting with it right now, but I don't really use it for macro. I think it's a little bit too bulky uh, for uh, macro work. Then we'll need a lens and I am using the uh, M Zwicko 30 mm macro. It's a, a f3.5. I really love this lens because it's perfect for refraction uh, because it boasts a 2.5 uh, magnification, very important. I'm on a, you know, I'm shooting a teeny tiny subject. And also it has a 0 0.55 minimum working distance, which means that I can focus really, really close to my subject. So that's my go-to lens. If you have the 60 millimeter macro, I've done some uh, refraction with it. It's also a great lens, but this will give you uh, more magnification. So highly recommend it. The third thing that's very, very important is a flashlight uh, because you will need to put some light on your subject and that will reflect into the water drop. Uh, so any flashlight will do. I'll put my flashlight in the description below. I also use a uh, light light torch, really like it because it's very small and compact. And I also, um, if you don't have any flashlight, just use your phone. You know, you have a flashlight on your phone that will do as well. Now I do have some extra gear I recommend like uh, this little remote cable. It's the Olympus RM-CB2, uh, um, but any remote will do. You just, I just use a remote because I don't want any vibration. Um, my subject is so, so small that any vibration would really not work out and make, just not make my shot. So remote control, highly recommend it. You can also use your phone and use the, uh, the Olympus app. If you're an Olympus shooter, um, that would work as well, as long as you're not pressing on the button and introducing vibrations. Then I also have my little macro bag. Uh, I always have it with me when I go shooting. One side, I have some clips because you never know what will need to be clipped to make it stable. So that costs like a few, you know, uh, dollars. It's not nothing fancy, but it works very well. And then on the other side, I have an insulin syringe. I highly, highly recommend it. I used to do it with droppers, eye droppers. Uh, and with, you know, spray bottle, but you can't really control uh, the amount of water drop and the position of your water drop as well as with a syringe. To get one, actually, you probably will need to buy a bag with multiple and then maybe you can, you know, give it to all your macro friends um, that just go to the pharmacist and they will help you out. That's where I got mine. Uh, my local pharmacist and I told them exactly what I was going to do with them because apparently there are different types of insulin syringe. So this one was recommended by my pharmacist to do 
uh, water drops. Um, the drop also don't uh, stick, so they will just get uh, away from the needle, which is great. And sometimes the eyedropper it doesn't work as well. So highly recommend that will help you out to uh, perfect your composition. And uh, if you're planning on taking it outside, I have a little recycled uh, contact lens container that I use and I put some water and then I'm ready to go and take it on the road. And then I also do use a tripod. You guys know I do not like tripod, uh, but for refraction, I need my camera to be completely stable. I need to be able to move around. So I use actually a, a platypod and an old uh, Arcatec uh, ball head. And it works pretty well. I can get really, really close to my subject that way, which sometimes I cannot do. I also have a Peak Design tripod, which I'm using right now to uh, shoot this video, but it's a little bit more bulky. And so this will usually be my go-to tripod for refraction. And then I think we're missing something. We're missing this, a flower, right? Because you need a subject. So those are just basic flower. I still have the price tag on. Uh, I got them at the local supermarket. Uh, I like, I picked those because they are round and remember the refraction, it will be upside down. So here there is no up side down it doesn't matter which side so it will work very very nicely for uh, doing refraction and i like the two color tone as well so now you might hear that some people will recommend a glycerin mix i don't i like to do water i bought actually a glycerin mix i've tried it i thought it was sticky i hated it i just like water just pure water and yes it might not last as long but that's great because that means that now you can create a different composition. Um, so I just recommend just water, especially as you're starting, water is fine. So now let's talk about setting up our shot. The first thing you need to do is maybe find a blade of grass and then try to put a water drop on it. I'm gonna use my insulin syringe for this and you just have to play around and see how much water can you know that blade of grass can hold. Once you have uh, your blade and your water set up, you are gonna try to find the right angle with your flower. So you might have to move your flower, raise it up, raise it down. Um, so make sure that you have enough space to do that, enough boxes to put under it um, to raise it up. And then with your naked eye, I want you to kind of, you know, go and look, put yourself where you think your lens should be and see if you can see a refraction uh, in that water drop. And then if you don't, just, you know, move yourself up, do that movement up and down and try to see if you see a refraction. And then with your hand, just uh, go and move that flower and see where to position that flower so that you can see it in your water drop. Once you have your composition, what you need to do, remember, is that's right. Get your flashlight, get your phone, and then you want to put some light on your flower. And you can see that's the difference. Without the light, with the light. That's quite a big difference. So make sure that you're lighting up your uh, background, your subject. Now for the setting, I like to start around like 7.1 for my aperture and then I play around with the ISO and with the speed. It really doesn't matter, I'm on a tripod, so I try to uh, keep a lower uh, ISO, like 200 is recommended for Olympus camera, so that's what I will set it for and then I'll see what speed I will need. Um, pro tip. In your camera, in my Olympus camera, I have a focus picking and I also have a, a magnification glass. I actually set up my two button in front of my camera. I'm going to show you it's easier. So this one is set up for magnification and this one is set up for um, uh, peak focusing. I use the magnification glass way more often. And so I just press on it and make sure that my subject in my water drop is, um, is focused, is in focus, it's sharp. So the magnification glass will help you to make sure that it is sharp. 
So once you've taken that first shot, make sure that you check it. Go upload it on your computer and make sure that it is sharp. One thing that I like to do for most of my refraction work is very often I don't take just one shot. I use the focus stacking in camera and then I can lower my aperture. I like to, you know, keep it as low as I can and uh, then uh, just focus stack all those shots. I think it's, it's going to give you better re result in terms of sharpness. And then just play around. Maybe you want to add a couple of drops. Uh, maybe you want to change uh, how you position your blade of grass. Uh, there is so much that you can do with refraction. Uh, it's just a question of uh, studying it. And then once you get the hook of it, uh, you'll be looking for a new creative way of uh, doing refraction. So I hope this video was useful for you guys. And uh, uh, if you like it, make sure that you click the like button. And once again, if you have any questions or if there is anything that you would like me to talk about in my next video, make sure that you're putting it in the comment. And don't hesitate, I'll always check comments. I always uh, answer any questions that you guys have. So just uh, uh, write down your comments. And if you are doing a refraction, you've been inspired by this video, please let me know what you are doing. I want to see your shot. I want to see what uh, you are creating. So make sure that uh, you're tagging me uh, on Instagram and uh, I'll be uh, super excited to see what you guys are going to get and how creative you will be with refraction. Until then, uh, have a happy weekend and I will see you very soon. Bye.